supernova explosion. A supernova can radiate as much energy as the sun will emit over its entire lifespan. Stars exist in a balance between energy from a nuclear furnace on the inside and gravitational pull of all the mass of it collapsing in on itself. And at some point when the nuclear furnace starts to die out, gravitational attraction becomes the final winner of that conflict. It collapses and it emits a bunch of light and it's due to gravity overcoming the nuclear furnace in the star. Now it's important to keep in mind that the energy of an exploding star isn't simply created out of nothing. Again, it's energy that's transformed from one type to another. The core of a massive star collapses, releasing a lot of gravitational potential energy. That energy then is channeled into neutrinos, into the kinetic energy of the ejected material, and into the visible energy that we observe. Supernovas are one of the most explosive transformers of energy in space. However, 99% of the energy released during a supernova is converted into something that's actually invisible to the naked eye. Strange ghostly particles called neutrinos. Neutrinos are nearly massless energetic particles that move at almost the speed of light and pass through matter virtually undisturbed. Every second, more than 50 trillion solar neutrinos pass through the human body without us knowing it. The likelihood of one of them interacting with a particle in your body is, is so low that you don't notice it. And even if it did happen, it would be just a little blip of energy that your body gets, which is much less significant than all the other blips of energy it gets from other kinds of particles that are running into you, such as light or radiation that's naturally produced from the Earth. Neutrinos were once impossible to detect. They traveled right through the Earth and exited back into space unnoticed. But in Hida, Japan, over 3,000 feet underground, lives the Super K Observatory. It houses a massive stainless steel tank containing ultra-pure water. It's been discovered that when neutrinos interact with the electrons or atomic nuclei in water, they produce a charged particle, which creates a flash of ultraviolet light. As that particle streams through the water, it actually gives out a tiny blip of radiation that can be measured by those little light detectors, which then says that's a neutrino. Could these stealthy particles be a source of energy here on Earth? That's what Alan Kay from Chicago, Illinois, wanted to ask the universe. So he texted us, how can we harness energy from neutrinos emitted by the sun? Interesting question, Alan. It turns out that neutrinos are incredibly hard to detect, so we probably can't harness the sun's neutrino energy. Also, we don't really want to because only about 3% of the sun's energy is in the form of neutrinos. It's much easier to harness the sunlight and there's much more of it. Neutrinos may not be able to alleviate our energy crisis, but lurking in each galaxy exists a ravenous beast that just may be the most fuel efficient engine in outer space. The ability to convert energy from one form to another has inspired innovative ideas for future space colonization. Supermassive black holes reside in the centers of most galaxies, including our Milky Way. They can store and unleash the energy of billions of supernovas. When the supermassive black holes were forming, a tremendous amount of gravitational potential energy was converted into radiated light and other forms of energy. Because you had a lot of material get compressed into a very small volume. It had to give up a lot of energy. The supermassive black hole is 10 billion suns worth. That means it has the equivalent mass of 10 billion stars, just all packed into a very tiny space. January 2008. 
NASA's Chandra X-ray Telescope unravels a puzzling mystery about the transformational energies produced by a black hole. It detects a supermassive black hole's powerful gravitational energy drawing in a nearby star. As the gluttonous beast gorges on the star, it spins wildly, sometimes approaching the speed of light. This kinetic energy twists up the gas and debris falling into the hole to form a fast-spinning rotational accretion disk. This rotating material is then released in powerful jets. This extremely high energy material spiraling around the black hole creates a very large magnetic field. Now some of the material actually follows those magnetic field lines and gets shot out along them, forming a big powerful jet that's sort of like a blowtorch. Recent computer simulations have shown that if the extreme kinetic or rotational energy from a black hole spin could be harnessed, these black monsters could become the ultimate galactic batteries. Wouldn't it be great if you could have a spinning black hole just spinning there, out there in space, and you build this thing in orbit around it that extracts energy from that. And that would give you a huge amount of energy to fuel your super advanced civilization. And black holes may not only be responsible for generating different forms of energies, they may serve a dual purpose as a galactic recycling center. One might imagine an advanced civilization living near a spinning black hole. It could send garbage trucks close to the spinning black hole that would dump their garbage at the appropriate time. Those trucks would then emerge from the vicinity of the black hole with more energy of motion, kinetic energy, than they had going in. Those trucks could then hit a turbine, like a windmill, drive the turbine, generate electrical energy, and thus light up their cities. What a neat way to get rid of your garbage and solve your energy crisis all at the same time. Black holes may energize a future space colony. But scientists are now discovering that the energy from whirling black holes may be transforming into something dangerous. Cosmic rays are highly energetic charged particles. Contrary to their name, they're not rays of light energy. Rather, they contain very large amounts of kinetic energy, which can cause deadly effects. Cosmic rays are way more energetic than anything we've been able to produce on Earth. Uh, hundreds of thousands of times more energetic. The most energetic cosmic rays are called ultra-high energy cosmic rays. They travel at close to the speed of light with ever-increasing brightness. An ultra-high energy cosmic ray has about as much energy as a tennis ball hit at 100 miles an hour. That's how fast the professionals get them going on court. That doesn't sound like a lot of energy, but actually there are trillions of particles making up a given tennis ball. And what's going on is that you've taken all of that energy and put it into one subatomic particle. And that's what a cosmic ray coming in through our atmosphere is like. And so that's a lot of energy for a single particle to have. New evidence suggests that galaxies, known as active galactic nuclei, may be the source for these ultra-high-energy cosmic rays. These are galaxies that have super-spinning, super-massive black holes at their cores. Those are essentially extremely powerful generators of energy. There are magnetic fields and electric fields all spinning around and throwing out particles at incredibly high rates, usually generated by a supermassive black hole at the core. And that sort of system, black holes especially, are able to produce huge amounts of energy that can throw out these particles in all directions. Ultra-high energy cosmic rays have become one of the top health threats to interplanetary space missions. 